Hello and welcome to another Common Core Algebra 1 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and today we'll be doing Unit 1, Lesson Number 9, More Structure Work. Before we begin, let me remind you that the worksheet that goes with this lesson, and a homework set, can be found by clicking on the description of the video. As well, don't forget that on our worksheets we have a QR code that can be scanned with either a smartphone or with a tablet to bring you right to the videos. Alright, let's begin. One of the most important things in Common Core Algebra 1 is seeing structure in expressions. In other words, being able to look at parts of an expression and treat them as a single entity. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this work like we did in a previous lesson, but it's going to be a little bit more complex. Still, I want you to try to have fun with it because I think it's kind of cool. Let's take a look at the first exercise. It says consider the somewhat complex expression x times x plus 4 plus 2 times x plus 4. Letter A says write an equivalent trinomial expression. Test the equivalency with a value of x equals 1. Show the test. All right. Well, one thing that we could do immediately, and I'm going to rewrite the actual expression down here so that we have something to work on, is we could distribute. We could say, well, I'm going to take that x and I'm going to multiply it through here, and I'll get x times x, which is x squared, and then x times 4, which is 4x. Here I could distribute this 2. So I'll get 2 times x, which is 2x, and 2 times 4, which is 8. Then I can combine these two terms, and I can get x squared plus 6x plus 8. So I've done double, uh, not double distribution, although yeah, I've distributed twice, so maybe it's double distribution, and I've gotten this particular expression. Now in theory, this trinomial, one, two, three terms, is equivalent to this more complicated expression. And here comes my test. All right, I'm gonna test it with x equals one, because I've been told to test it with x equals one. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute it into our sort of more complicated expression, x times x plus 4 plus 2 times x plus 4. So what do I get when I evaluate this expression with x equals 1? Well, I get 1 times 1 plus 4 plus 2 times 1 plus 4. So that'll be 1 times 5 plus 2 times 5. So that'll be 5 plus 10, that will be 15. Now let's see what I get when I substitute 1 into this trinomial expression. Well here I'll get 1 squared plus 6 times 1 plus 8. 1 squared is 1 times 1. 6 times 1 is 6. 8 is just 8. And 1 plus 6 is 7 plus 8 gives me 15. Awesome. Now, by the way, that test doesn't prove that these two expressions are equivalent. We could have been some of the most unlucky people on Earth and gotten the wrong trinomial, but it just happens to have the same value as our original expression when x is 1. One thing I know for certain, though, is if those two don't turn out to be the same, then I've done one of two things. I've either botched it when I did the test, or I botched it when I came up with the equivalent expression. Unfortunately, I'm not really sure which. Let's take a look at letter B. Write an equivalent expression that is in the form of the product of two binomials. Also test the equivalency with x equals 1. Well, this is really cool. Plus, there's this like random line that just appeared on the screen. I don't know where that thing came from. And I'm not really sure why I'm even trying to erase it. Okay, just decided that's not a great move. Here's what I want to bring your attention to, because we're going to see this a lot today. Notice that there's an x plus 4 and an x plus 4 here and here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually reverse the distributive property and I'm going to factor that x plus 4 out. Now what was that x plus 4 multiplying? Well, it was multiplying an x that's here. It's kind of hard to see because I drew that red box in there. Right? So it was multiplying an x, and it was multiplying a positive 2. So there it is. I claim that this complicated expression 
is the same as x plus 4 times x plus 2. I think I'm going to need this space, so I need to get rid of my line. All right, and again, we're going to test it. So we've already tested the expression for x equals 1 with the more complex expression. Let's now test it here. All right, so I'm going to put 1 into here, 1 plus 4, and I'm going to put 1 into here, 1 plus 2. Of course, 1 plus 4 is 5. 1 plus 2 is 3, and that's 15. Yes. So what are we really doing here? What we're doing is that we're seeing that x plus 4 in letter B can be considered a single entity. And it really is because it's grouped inside of parentheses like that. We're treating it as if it's just one thing. That one thing is multiplying both an x and a positive 2. We can reverse that multiplication by factoring an x plus 4 out. We're factoring here. All right, we're rewriting, rewriting this more complex expression into a pure product, x plus 4 times x plus 2. All right, and we're going to work with that quite a bit today. So I'll point it out each and every time. Anyhow, I'm going to clear this out. Think about it a little bit. Write down anything you need to. Pause the video. All right, scrubbing, and we're scrubbed. All right, let's take a look at number two. Consider the expression x plus 4 times x minus 5 plus x plus 4 times x minus 2. Write an equivalent expression that is in the form of the product of two binomials, product of two binomials. Test the equivalency with a value of x. Show your test. Now, I bet that some of you have already caught on. So what I'd like you to do, if you think you understand what's going on, is pause the video and take as much time as you need to to try to answer this question. All right, let's go through it. So again, let's highlight what we should be seeing here. All right, what I notice is that the x plus 4 here is the same as the x plus 4 here. So just like in the last problem, I'm not sure why I like the x plus 4 so much, I'm going to factor an x plus 4 out. Now what's it multiplying? Well, technically, the x plus 4 is multiplying an x minus 5. I'm going to leave it in parentheses for right now. And it's also multiplying an x minus 2. Now we have most certainly not done quite yet what the problem is asking me for. This is definitely a binomial. All right, but this is not yet a simplified binomial. We want to kind of keep going a little bit on this. So I'm going to take that x plus 4 and I'm just going to leave it. Now, what am I going to do here? Well, at first, when we look at this, those parentheses seem kind of confusing. In fact, we can use the associative property of addition and subtraction to really remove the parentheses. Say, well, no, I don't have to do it in that order. In fact, I can look at that problem the same way as I look at this problem. And then I can really look at this as x plus x. I'm going to change this into plus negative 5 plus negative 2. Some of you won't need to do this step. Some of you will be able to go to the final step almost immediately. But I'll get x plus 4 times 2x minus 7. And there is the product of two binomials. Now, how do we know whether or not we've done it correctly? Well, we could grab a value of x. Let's not go with x equals 1. That, that's getting a little bit boring. Let's go with x equals, know, let's say, 6. I like that. So we're going to test. All right. So let me test it first in the more complicated expression, the x plus 4 times x minus 5 plus x plus 4 times x minus 2. Let's test it in this expression. So 6 plus 4 times 6 minus 5. Don't want to lose my parentheses there. 6 plus 4 times 6 minus 2. All right, 6 plus 4 is 10. 6 minus 5 is 1. Again, 6 plus 4 is 10. And 6 minus 2 is 4. 10 times 1 is 10. 10 times 2 and 4 is 40. So that expression, the more complex one, is 50 when I test x equals 6. Let's now test it in 
x plus 4 times 2x minus 7. Well, if we put x equals 6 in there, we get 6 plus 4. We get 2 times 6 minus 7. So this is going to be a little bit more complicated. 2 times 6 is 12 minus 7. 12 minus 7 is 5. And 10 times 5 is 50. And there we have it. Yes. Right? You can always test equivalency, or more properly, you can always test whether equivalency is incorrect. That doesn't really prove that the equivalency is correct, but it, it does tell us that does tell us that we don't know whether it's correct or incorrect. I'm not sure how helpful that is. It's a good indicator that we've probably done it right. Okay? So I'm going to clear out the text. Here we go. All right, let's keep playing with this. This is really a, a form of factoring, right? Where we look at these common binomials and we factor them out, all right? We pull them out using the distributive property. So take a look at number three. Now this one's gonna be a little bit trickier. All right, I'll, I'll explain why. It says, which of the following is equivalent to the expression blue? Show the manipulations that lead to your choice, blue. <laughs> We have to figure out which one's equivalent to this. All right, so let's look at what's common here. We've got x minus 3 and x minus 3. So I'm going to factor that x minus 3 out. Okay, and what I'm going to be left with, I'll just stick with red here, is 2x plus 7 minus x minus 4. All right. Let's talk a little bit about this. Okay, nothing that we have to worry about here. We can just write that down as 2x plus 7. Get rid of those parentheses, they're doing nothing. All right, but here this is tricky. Here we are subtracting x minus 4. So what we're going to do is we're really going to look at this as multiplying this entire quantity by negative 1. All right, essentially whenever we subtract a binomial or a trinomial, we have to switch the signs on absolutely everything. All right, and that's really tricky. I have pre-calculus students who mess that up. Right? We can't just subtract the x, we also have to subtract the negative 4. When we subtract a negative 4, it becomes a positive 4. Now, doing a little bit of rearranging, we can say that that's 2x minus x plus 7 plus 4, and that'll be x minus 3 times x plus 11. Oh, there it is. All right. Again, we can test the equivalency by picking a good value of x and seeing if it works out correctly. All right. Watch out. I can't emphasize enough how tricky subtraction is going to be. We'll see that again and again. So we'll get some practice on it. Okay. So, pause the video now if you need to. All right, moving on. All right, rewrite each of the following expressions as an equivalent product of two binomials. Woo, wow, okay, here we go. So, what I'd like you to do, if you think you understand how this works, is I'd like you to pause the video. Try to work through all five of these. I'll give you another chance to pause the video eventually, but it's good if you take a shot at first. Watch out for anything involving subtraction, especially letter B and letter E, and especially, especially, especially letter E. Letter E can be very, very tricky. All right? So give it a shot. Pause the video. I don't know. I would say take up to 10 minutes on this problem at least and see what you can get. All right, let's go through it. So the first few are actually quite easy. We just look and we say, all right, I've got an x plus 5 and an x plus 5. So that's what I'm going to be pulling out. All right, in fact, we're going to be done with the first problem before we even know it. What's multiplying the first x plus 5 is x. What's multiplying the second x plus 5 is positive 7. And that's it. Each of these is a binomial. 
Remember, binomial means two terms. One, two, one, two. That's it. I think I'm gonna switch back to blue. All right, let's take a look at this one. X minus two and X minus two, right? What are they multiplying? Well, in the first case, it's multiplying three X. And in the second case, it's multiplying negative four. And yet again, we're done. Yeah, I'll just keep, keep switching colors. Now, letter C is actually quite tricky. Hmm, what, what am I supposed to do here? I mean, I see an x plus 4 here, and I see an x plus 4 here, but I don't see anything multiplying this. So one thing that we could do is we could rewrite this in kind of a tricky way. We could rewrite it like this. Now, I want you to think about this for a second. Let's uh, sit back and really appreciate what we've just done. You can multiply by the number one anytime you want. It's actually got a special name, not one that you particularly know, need to know, but it's called the identity element for multiplication. Because when we multiply by the number one, it doesn't change anything. So I can rewrite x plus four as one times x plus four. The reason that's an advantage is that I can now say, all right, I am going to factor out an x plus four, and then what I'm left with is a negative two x on the first term and a positive one on the second. And there it is. All right, now we go back to red. Okay, for letter D, we look, we look, we look, we look. We've got an X plus three and an X plus three. Here's where it's gonna take us a little more time. So we take that X plus three, we factor it out. We have an X minus six. And actually, let me, let me be good about this. Sometimes I, I, I have the urge to skip steps and I shouldn't, right? Because really, technically speaking, I'm multiplying that x plus three by an x minus six and by an x plus nine. Now, because it's pretty much all addition going on inside of here, and by addition, I mean that one, I can actually remove the parentheses, x minus six plus x plus nine. I'm gonna write this out all the way especially so we can contrast it with the next problem. So I'll get x plus x plus negative 6 plus positive 9. So I'm using the commutative and associative properties of addition there, plus the fact that I can rewrite that negative 6 as positive negative 6, or plus negative 6, sorry. And now I can finish this problem off, x plus 3 times 2x plus 3. And that plus 3 comes from combining these two. And I seem to have left off a parenthesis. There it is. Remember, in each case, what we're doing is we're writing an equivalent expression. An equivalent, 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 equivalent expression. All right, last one. Love me some x minus 4. All right, we factor that x minus 4 out. In the first case, we're left with 2x plus 1. In the second case, we're left with minus x plus 6. Again, very critical we can now look at subtracting that x plus 6. Nothing going on here. Absolutely nothing. But we distribute that multiplication by negative 1. Some teachers will say that we're distributing the subtraction. I think that that's okay to say. I think that that's a good way to put it. And then we can look at it as 2x plus negative x plus 1 plus negative 6. And 2x minus x is x, 1 minus 6 is negative 5, and we get x minus 4 times x minus 5. Oh good, still correct. And multicolored. I should use multiple colors more often. It looks good. All right, so that is tricky. Wait until the next problem though. I think you're gonna like this one. So. Let me clear out the text. Pause the video now if you need to. All right, here we go. All right, last problem. I love this one. So this takes us back to something that we did in a lesson a few lessons ago. That doesn't sound right, but anyway, you, you know what I mean. It says the binomial 4n plus 1 is equal to 7 for some value of n. Please don't solve for the value of n. Don't do it. It's like cheating. It's no fun. 
we're going to use mindful manipulations and look for structure to figure out what the value of this complicated expression is. What does this expression equal? If 4n plus 1 is equal to 7. So what I'd like you to do is play around with this. See if you can use the fact that 4n plus 1 is the same thing as 7, right? That's what it means, right? Without solving for n, I don't want you to figure out what n is equal to. Don't do that, all right? Try to use mindful manipulations to figure out what that expression is equal to, okay? Pause the video and take as much time as you need to. All right, let's play around with it. Well, if we do what we did in the last problem, and see that 4n plus 1 is common to both of these, then we'll just pull that right out. What are we left with? Well, we're left with 3n plus 1, and we're left with n plus 2. Thankfully, we're not left with subtraction. So let's clean this up a little bit. Um, because we're not left with subtraction, we can effectively get rid of both sets of parentheses, and hopefully you're comfortable enough now that you can say, well, 3n and n is 4n, plus 1 plus 2 is plus 3. Well, okay, I mean, I know what 4n plus 1 is, but what's 4n plus 3? Well, this is where we want to do a mindful manipulation, right? And 4n plus 3 will be the same as 4n plus 1, plus 2. In other words, I can break that 3 into a 1 plus 2. This is kind of cool because I can now use the associative property of addition to rewrite it like this. Now why would I do that? Well, I would do that because every time I see a 4n plus 1, I can put in 7. So what do I have? I have 7 times 7 plus 2. And that's 7 times 9, and that's 63. And that's it. That's what this complicated expression is equal to. It's pretty neat, huh? All right. So we're going to clear out all this text. Write down what you need to. All right, here we go. All clear. All right, so in today's work, what we primarily concentrated on was treating a binomial as just one quantity and then factoring it out of a complex expression. All right, we're going to be using this later on when we do other factoring and equation solving techniques, so it's important, right, to kind of have this idea down. Anyhow, I want to thank you for joining me for another Common Core Algebra 1 lesson by EMAP instruction. My name is Kirk Wyatt. And until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.